look like this right now, and I'm trying to take myself seriously so that you guys can take me seriously. Oh god, I gotta really thank my life decisions, my guy. What are you doing? Uh, I don't have plugs in. So, sorry for my butthole ears. Couple disclaimers before I start. Uh, one, this video is in no way, shape, or form a tutorial on how to put Johnny Depp's face on your face. Or two, when I say we're gonna talk about pirates, we're specifically talking about the real life pirates that I personally, through my own opinion and research, believe that the characters in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are based off of. Some of them are really obvious. Some of them are not so obvious. I think that in the style of Mikey, Glam and Gore, we're just gonna... Oh, there it goes. And there the other one goes. Kinda. So first off, we're gonna talk about Blackbeard because I feel like it's only right. It only makes sense to start with him because he's little kids screaming outside, please stop. I will smite you. I feel like it's only right because Blackbeard is definitely the most well-known and notorious pirate, like in modern day anyways. And obviously Blackbeard in Stranger Tides is based off of Blackbeard. Oh, I should have just shaved them off. Wait, but I can just like take off what I need to, right? Look how little it is. Oh, Blackbeard was originally named, not originally, he just is named Edward Teach, or sometimes if you look it up, it comes out as his last name is Thatch. I'm going with Edward Teach because I've always known Blackbeard's real name as Edward Teach. So obviously Blackbeard is a nickname. He got that nickname from his long, luscious black beard and his fearsome appearance. He was a scary looking man, apparently. So supposedly Blackbeard served as a privateer in his early life during Queen Anne's war. After he served in the war as a privateer, he apparently ran off to New Providence, which was essentially, you know how Tortuga is like the pirate central. Well, New Providence was essentially that, but in real life. And he joined Captain Hornigold's crew while he was there. Not gonna give you a lesson on him, just know that he joined his crew. And they sailed the sea together being scallywags and committing crimes and piracy. Near the end of 1717, Captain Hornigold retired and he took two ships of their fleet with him and this is where it gets juicy. Shortly after Hornigold retired, Edward and his crew captured a French slave ship. It held 40 cannons and was crewed by over 300 men. This ship was immediately renamed the infamous Queen Anne's Revenge. So he was obviously one of the most feared and like considered brutal pirates of all time and in all of history. And he played up on this. He milked the crap out of this. Okay, this guy was known to apparently put lit fuses, so like cannonball fuses, under his hat, light them to give off an ominous glow and instill fear into people he was trying to rob. What? <laughs> he earned his title. Also to add to his uh, fear factor, we'll call it, he was known for running an incredibly tight ship and using scare tactics to do so. It's also reported that he used uh, aggression and even murdered his captives. However, there's no actual reports of this like anywhere throughout history of him being as brutal and aggressive as lore says, essentially. So, I don't know. Take from that what you will. Maybe Edward Teach was actually a really nice guy and just looked scary. I relate. So last thing for Blackbeard is he died, obviously. He died in 1718 following a battle with Lieutenant Robert Maynard. Maynard? Pronunciation not my strong suit, you guys. Apparently, this Maynard dude, uh, after winning the battle with Blackbeard, hung his severed head off of the bowsprit of his ship, which is like the long pointy part at the front of ships, in order to claim his reward. I don't really know who was the bad guy in this situation or who was brutal, cause like that seems 
it just seems like a lot to me to do that. But I don't know, it was, it was different times back then, so, you know, who knows. Johnny Depp has a really pointy nose, you guys. Wow. Anyways, though, that is the end of Blackbeard's story. Moving on. The next one, I know I'm going to say this wrong because I do not speak French. Francois Lolonoi. Jean David Now Now So sorry was his real name, but he was given the nickname Francois Lolonoi, which means flail of the Spaniards. This nickname stemmed from his cruel treatment to prisoners. The French and the Spanish were at war at this time, so mostly Spanish prisoners, hence flail of the Spaniards. However, Francois was considered the actual cruelest pirate of all time, like not Blackbeard, him. So French have a mean streak. He was sold into slavery as a young boy and he was taken to the Caribbean with his master at the time from 1650 to 1660-ish. At the end of 1660, he joined a group of pirates who were stationed on the island that he was in and he showed skill through robbing and killing Spaniards. So they accepted him into the crew. My forehead's itchy. He then shortly after was given a small ship to command by the governor of Tortuga in which he was immediately merciless and extremely cruel. A little fun fact for you guys, he was also the first pirate to lead organized land attacks. So attacking on land in like towns and not on the sea. So in 1663, his entire crew was killed by Spaniards after a shipwreck. And he is the only one to survive because he took the blood of his dead crew and smeared it all over him. Sorry, that's graphic. And also covered, like piled their dead bodies on top of him to make it seem like he was dead so that the Spaniards would just assume he wasn't leave. Like that's messed up. <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't do the same thing, but that's messed up. Not only did he manage to survive, after his entire crew was somehow killed, but he then snuck onto the Spanish ship undetected, released the slaves that they had on the ship, and with the help of the slaves, he defeated the entire ship and took it over. And I'm talking like a few slaves, not like a lot. After that, he pretty much just did, you know, standard pirate things. He um, took over towns, destroyed them, pillaged, plundered, yada, yada, yada. Um, but he was known for specifically cutting people's hearts out while they were still alive and using it as a scare tactic for others in order to get people of the towns to turn on their friends and family and give him what he wanted. So again, Francois was a bad biddy. My favorite fact about Francois is that, this isn't even a fact actually, it's just like an alternate ending to his life essentially that I found while researching him. He was caught by cannibals and eaten. <laughs> All right, so Blackbeard was crazy obvious. This one may not be if you aren't a nerd about pirates like I am, but Captain Lelanal, Lelanoi, however you say his name, reminds me of Captain Cheval, who is the pirate lord of the Mediterranean Sea in At World's End. He's the French guy. I'll put pictures up uh, here and here, but they look crazy similar in the character design versus what Lelanoi is supposed to have looked like. That's all I got on that one. On to the next. Okay, next up, and this is personally one of my favorite pirates. We have Madame Cheng, who, if you didn't piece together already, Mistress Cheng, Madame Cheng. Madame Cheng was actually married to Cheng Yi, I think is his name. And he was a pirate with a very large fleet. And she was forced into marrying him. Well, she wasn't forced, but she didn't do it for love we'll say. So she was actually a prostitute in her early life and was kidnapped and captured by Ching Yi's fleet. And he basically, you know, being a man, lined up all of the most beautiful captures that they had and wanted one of them to be his wife. And he picked Madame Ching and she refused. And then he persuaded her to marry him with uh, wealth and promise of great power. And then she was like, oh, you know what, on second thought. So he was basically like a sugar daddy for her, right? Okay, so after that, the two of them adopted one of their captured 
like servant boys and the two adopt him uh, like around two years later, her husband dies. Obviously she gains control over everything. So she is now the captain. Um, one, because, you know, it was her husband, so she kind of got it left to her, but also, like, the crew already feared her more than they had feared the original captain. So she was just like, I'm taking over, deal with it. And shortly after she took over, she marries her adopted son, Chang Pao. He just happens to be, you know, her son, adoptively. I smell an affair. Eventually, the Chinese military tries to defeat her ships and her fleet, right? Well, she creams them, basically, in these battles to the point where they offer her pardon on her own term. So essentially, she was told, like, hey, if you retire, you can literally have anything that you want and anything you desire. We just want you to retire. And so she did. However, she lived out the rest of her life running an opium ring. So, even when she was an old lady, she was still... She did well for herself. We'll put it that way, alright? She said, you can take me out of the sea, but you cannot take the pirate out of me. So my conclusion on this research and this particular pirate is that Madame Cheng was the inspiration for Mistress Ching in At World's End. And Mistress Ching is the pirate lord of the Pacific Ocean. On to the next. So we have Anne Bonny and her partial... For a little bit husband james bonnie so these two definitely remind me of elizabeth swan and william turner so anne's life specifically talk about her first she started out born in ireland to her father william cormac and his servant and her mother who was cormac's wife found out about the affair and made it extremely public which cost him all of his wealth and his reputation as a lawyer at the time in Ireland. He then decided to move away from Ireland with his servant, who was now his wife, and his newborn daughter, Anne. They ended up settling in South Carolina, where he purchased a plantation and began a new career as a lawyer. And he very quickly regained his wealth and his status. When Anne was guessed to be 16-ish, she fell in love with a small-time pirate named James Bonney. James was only interested in Anne because her father was wealthy and he was interested in the plantation that they owned. Anne's father did not like this. You know, obviously he wanted the best for his daughter and wanted her to marry a well-off man and was trying to get her to marry a well-off man at this time. Um, but she, uh, being a stubborn young lady, decided to marry James. The pirate against her father's will sound like somebody else uh yeah Anne's father was like no not happening so he kicked her out and james took her with him to new providence which as i said earlier was kind of like pirate capital now when they got there james had a really difficult time supporting Anne because you know he was banging on marrying into her wealth and then she got kicked out so he decided to become a pirate spy and informer to the government and Anne did not like this because she felt that it was strange and it made her very uneasy how easily he turned on his own kind which you know pirates she had a gay best friend named Pierre and he ran a ladies retreat so basically like a safe house for women that was very well known and pretty much famous he was an outed and celebrated homosexual in like the 1600s and i love him shout out to pierre i love him she runs to her gay best friend pierre and he's like girl i got you she gets a divorce she leaves james because he pissed her off and then she ultimately runs away with a pirate captain named calico jack which we'll get to him later so in conclusion Anne and james remind me of will and liz so cute except that Will and Liz ended up getting married, and Liz didn't run off with Jack Sparrow. So. Hello, I'm back. I had to go get my car and pick it up from inspection. Um, I think that since the last time y'all saw me, I added an outline of where the beard will go. Anyways, continuing on. His name comes up as Heredin. 
Barbarossa or Hazir Barbarossa, but he was a Mediterranean pirate. He was greatly known as being uh, one of the brothers of the Barbarossa brothers, who were infamous pirates of the Ottoman time period in the Ottoman Empire. If you can't tell already, I feel like this guy is the inspiration for Barbosa. Okay? Hector Barbosa. Cool. So in roughly 1505, the Spanish and Portuguese were looking to expand their territory off of the coast of North Africa. This resulted in the death of multiple Ottomans, and the Barbarossa brothers decided to join the Ottoman army, navy thing, I guess, and serve for the Ottoman Empire and the Sultan. They became privateers for the Ottoman Sultan. They pretty much just went around sailing, cruising, disrupting Portuguese and Spanish trade ships. After the Sultan's death in 1512, the brothers were no longer privateers from what I found, but they just continued to go along disrupting trade ships as an independent source. They were still doing it in honor of the Sultan and the Ottomans, but they were doing it um, under their own control and not under the government control, if that makes sense. To the point where the government actually did eventually end up offering them aid and financial support during this time, which they took full advantage of. And the Ottomans did this because they realized that this was a potential territorial gain opportunity, meaning that with them sailing the waters and getting rid of enemy ships, they had more of an opportunity and chance to gain territory over the Spanish and the Portuguese. Oh, I also forgot to mention that Barbarossa uh, translates to Redbeard in Italian, and Barbarossa's character design has kind of like a reddish brown beard, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But Hazir's brother died in 1518 during a battle with the Spanish, and then Hazir decided to take over the name Barbarossa and continued to sail independently for the Ottoman Empire and the government. So he worked pretty closely with the Ottoman military and the government, and during this time he gained a lot of military and financial support from them, and eventually their relationship grew and grew and grew, as one does, to the point where his ship actually became a prime base in the western Mediterranean for the Ottomans, um, so they were, they, were, they were tight. Their relationship kept growing over time, and in 1522, he was actually offered a position as governor, which he obviously took because, you know, it's a good title. Why wouldn't you? And then after that, his forces captured Tuni, and the Ottomans were extremely impressed by this apparently, so they actually made him the admiral-in-chief for the Ottoman navy, which is how he lived out the remainder of his life. So a couple things I noticed between Hazir Barbarossa and Hector Barbosa. Captain Barbosa was the pirate lord of the Caspian Sea. The Caspian Sea was one of the bodies of water that bordered the Ottoman Empire at its highest peak of territory. So it's the same general territory that Hazir Barbarossa would have been sailing in and been a part of. Winky dink, I think not. Also, Barbarossa became a privateer early on in his career, which isn't necessarily the exact same for Barbosa, but it's, you know, it's a movie. It's not, you know, it's not factual. And Barbarossa also had a feud with the Spanish. And in Stranger Tides, Barbosa becomes a privateer for the Royal Navy, and he has a mission to beat the Spanish to the Fountain of Youth and stop them from getting it, basically. I mean, he also has his own agenda, but he is a privateer for the Royal Navy. And then in Dead Man Tale No Tales, Barbosa has his own fleet, he's very wealthy, he is dressed as an admiral, I don't know if he specifically is, like if that's his title, but it gives those vibes. So they have the same kind of career path. Oh my god. Okay, so all I have left to do is tell you um, what everyone came here for, which is who do I think Jack is based off of, and I have to put the beard on and do all the little details and then we'll be Gucci good to go. Okay, fun. So I personally think that Jack is based off of a combination of three different pirates. Now, John Ward is the first one that comes up and the most common one that comes up. If you type in, like I said, who was Jack Sparrow based off of. However, I think that he is the least relevant 
pirate, um, trait-wise, to Jack in Jack's character. The biggest thing is that John Ward's nickname was Birdie, and Jack's last name is Sparrow, Captain Jack Sparrow. Sparrow Birdie, you know, you can put two and two together. John Ward started his sailing career as a fisherman and eventually became a privateer for Queen Elizabeth. So once he was a privateer, he started to plunder and go after specifically Spanish Armada ships after a failed invasion from the Spanish Armada. So technically, John Ward got his start because of the Spanish and Jack got his start as captain because of the Spanish, because of Salazar. Like that's really reaching for something, but that's like the one only interesting other thing I found. John Ward was described as an extremely short and balding man. <laughs> Total opposite of Jack's character design. However, he was also described as being drunk from morn to night and being a fool and idiot in his trade. Jack is like technically a fool, but he, I wouldn't go as far as to say he's an idiot because he is extremely cunning and extremely smart. Okay, so moving on to Edward England. Edward England earned a title as one of the most notorious pirates to ever exist by sailing on a ship that was called Pearl. Sounds like Jack Sparrow's beloved Black Pearl, right? Right. Good. Glad we had this talk. He sailed on a ship called the Pearl. That's... <laughs> Boom, connection number one. On top of that and adding to that, the flag that he sailed under was the classic Jolly Roger flag, which is the skull and the two swords underneath or skull and crossbones. I'm kind of sparing the details of Jack's pirates because otherwise this video would be really, really long um, and it's probably already pretty long at this point. But this is just a fun fact I wanna throw in. Uh, he eventually started to gain his own fleet and around the beginning of 1719, two ships from that fleet broke off and went their separate ways, and one of them was Blackbeard's Queen Anne Revenge. I think that's pretty cool. He was specifically known for tormenting and pretty much having beef with the East India Trading Company. As we know, Jack has tons of beef with the East India Trading Company. Well, I mean, Jack has beef with just about literally every other character in all of the movies, but I digress. So around the same time as England's beef with the East India Trading Company, a Scottish captain named James Macrae put up a large resistance to his fleet, killing over 90 pirates, and they eventually caught him and had captured him. The crew was extremely angered by the death of their own and wanted him to be put to death. England stood up for him and he ended up living. However, the crew did not like this and they rose in a mutiny against England from this mutiny, they marooned him and his closest followers on an island that was very, very far off of all of the trade routes. Sounds like Jack, right? He miraculously escaped by building a ship to get off of the island. Jack also miraculously escaped. I mean, his was a lie with the sea turtles and such, but he did escape by ship. So I find that very interesting. So Edward England comes to a very close tie with who I believe to be the main inspiration for Jack's character. I think that the details mostly come from England. However, Jack's personality and demeanor and everything that makes him the crazy lovable character that he is, I think comes from Captain Calico Jack. So Calico Jack's real name is John Rackham and he is remembered as the most notorious pirate of the Caribbean Sea and Jack Sparrow is the Pirate Lord of the Caribbean Sea. He also is such an extremely notorious and like famous pirate, but he never acquired great wealth. He was a horrible fighter. He didn't have very good naval tactics, which would essentially be fighting at sea and, you know, commanding battles. Um, he pretty much sucked as a pirate. And skill level wise, he was actually considered one of the worst pirates of history, but yet he's one of the most known. So he was known and he got his fame based off of how cunning and smart and intelligent he was, even though I look like a cowboy. I look like a cowboy. I can't look at myself. I'm just going to keep talking. I'm so sorry. Wait, why does it look this good? He also was the first captain pirate to sail with female crew members. And one of those crew members was Anne Bonnie from earlier in the video. Remember I said she ran off with 
you know, a pirate captain, Calico Jack. Yeah, this is him. So obviously Jack sailed with Elizabeth. Like that's that one's a given, but throughout all of the movies and his pirate career, he also sailed with multiple other women. So the main reason that I chose to believe that Calico Jack is Jack Sparrow's main inspiration is more so along the lines of his personality trait and how he became so infamous without having any skills. Jack is not a good fighter. He's not that great of a naval captain, okay? He's an amazing captain, just not naval-wise. Jack achieves everything by outsmarting other people and just kind of winging it. And as Calico Jack is considered to skill-wise be one of the worst pirates of all time, you know, the infamous line about Jack is, he ought to be the worst pirate I've ever seen but he's actually like the best pirate that you've ever seen. That personally to me holds more meaning over, you know, Edward England. He had the Pearl, Jack has the Black Pearl. He had issues with the East India Trading Company, so does Jack. The demeanor of Jack Sparrow's character and his traits and his personality as a character is why he's a favorite character of all time. That's why he's Jack Sparrow. like. That's the whole character. So that to me is more important and that's why I chose him. All right, now that you know who I think Jack is based off of, I'm gonna put the rest of his hair all over my face and I'll be back as Jack. I feel like I look pretty damn close to Johnny Depp. You're welcome for learning about pirates with me while I turn myself into the most amazing pirate of all time. Mr. Gibbs, my hat. Ready? Okay, come on. Key. Not that I wasn't fully convinced before, but I'm 1000% convinced now that Jack is my alter ego. I feel like I belong in this. I feel like I'm supposed to look like this all the time. I really want to do videos on like folklore and stuff along those lines and do makeup related to the different lores and tales or like even this, like comparing movie characters and like movie plots to like real life and real history. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this, um, give me a like help me out and maybe subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and yeah that's it follow me on instagram all my links will be down below that's all i got okay bye thanks for watching